This will be lesson four of chapter two. And in this lesson, we'll talk about separating mixtures. Now, recall that mixtures have to have more than one substance together. And they can either be homogenous or heterogeneous. And then we'll hear you can separate them because you have mixtures have different substances mixed. You can actually separate them. And that's what we'll talk about. Now, it's important to say that pure substances cannot be separated into simpler components by physical means. But you could separate them using chemical means. So you have to undergo a chemical change to separate pure substances because they are chemically bonded, chemically linked. But mixtures, you can use physical means, like heating it up or boiling it and so forth. And that's what we'll talk about. There are five of these separation techniques. The first is actually quite simple. You may be aware of this one, and it's called filtration. In filtration, what we do is we usually have a mixture that has a solid and a liquid in it, and the way to separate them is by pouring it through a special piece called a filter paper. And this filter paper will catch the solid components, and the liquid will actually drip down into the solution or into the flask. So you, this way you can separate the solid from the liquid. And you can dry out the solid. You can usually dry the filter paper, weigh it, and do whatever else is needed. But this is how you separate a solid from a liquid, by filtration. Usually you begin by dissolving the solid in a liquid. Say if you have a cup of sugar, you can actually dissolve the sugar with water. And then uh, you have this liquid. Now, since sugar dissolves, you can't separate it this way. But if you had, say, sand in the midst of the sugar, the sand wouldn't dissolve, but the sugar would. And that would be a way to use this filtration technique. The second one is called crystallization. What you do here is you evaporate the liquid to leave the solid behind. So if you had yourself a solution of sugar water, you can actually evaporate the water, heat up the water, let it evaporate, and the sugar will remain because the sugar is a solid. Crystallization refers to the fact that you're forming crystals, and crystals are actually just solid little components. Now, you can do this by, uh, or you can use this technique to form rock candy. You may be aware of rock candy. And the way rock candy is formed is you make a solution of sugar, water, usually you add food coloring to it, and then you let the water evaporate, and the rock candy settles out. So this is uh, by removing the liquid through evaporation. The third technique is called distillation. This one is probably not as familiar to you, and we'll demonstrate this in class. But distillation, usually you have yourself a mixture of different liquids. So in here, maybe you have three, two or three liquids, and each liquid boils at a different temperature. So if you begin heating it, the liquid that boils first will start to come up. What you can do is you can actually get it to go down here, and then you can cool the liquid as it evaporates, and then collect it in this flask. So this is the process of distillation. Usually, you can separate liquids from one another based on their boiling point. The one that boils first leaves, and the one that boils last remains, is the idea. This is called distillation. You may have heard of distilling as a technique. Centrifugation is the next one, the fourth one. And in this case, what you do is you can quickly separate uh, a solid, dense particle from another particle. So what you've got, if you have test tubes and you have a, a bunch of solution, and you have little particles of solid inside this test tube. The test tube actually, uh, if you wait, eventually the particles of solid will probably settle out on their own. And the solid will settle to the bottom and the liquid will remain. However, you can speed this process up by putting it into one of these machines, a centrifugation machine. And notice these little holes are actually made uh, for the test tube. So you would stick the test tube in there and then close the lid and then this spins it. And as the interior portion of the spins, it forces the more heavy particles toward the bottom, and you can quickly compact uh, a test tube of particles in this way. This is usually done with blood. Anytime we need to separate the components of blood, if somebody draws your blood and wants to separate them, they would put it in one of these, and your blood is a mixture of many different things, 
and you can easily separate uh, those two di different uh, parts of blood. The very last one then, is something called chromatography. Now this one is also a technique for separating liquids. Uh, and what you do is you add your mixture of liquids, it can also be solids, to what's called an absorbing, absorbing media. And this is another chemical that will pull the mixture out. And as it pulls the mixture out, it will actually separate the different parts of the mixture. An example of this would be if you take a marker, here this is a, some sort of marker, probably black marker. If you take black marker, now usually black pen or black marker, the black is made of a bunch of different uh, chemicals mixed together, a bunch of different colors mixed together. And you can actually separate the black ink from um, itself, the different components, you can, you can separate them. You'll see that they're made of blue and green and red and orange, all of these. And you do it by placing this piece into a beaker. You cover that with a watch glass or something of that sort. And you let the liquid inside the beaker slowly seep up. And it, as it seeps up, as the liquid seeps up, it will dissolve different components and separate them. Kind of a neat trick, and we'll also show you this. These are the five separation techniques that will uh, imp uh, apply in class to do a lab. So hopefully you've uh, gotten all those down, and we'll see you in class.